Okay. Hello. Thank you for taking uh, your time to edu educate us, uh, Dr. Ren. What do you think about taking MENT, M-E-T, for TRT, and what uh, would be a TRT dosage? Is it safer or more harmful than testosterone? How often would you inject it? Any information you can provide is appreciated. Well, MENT, as I understand, is a pro-hormone. I think people call it 7-MENT also, and it's a pro-hormone to another anabolic that I really haven't studied or heard that much about, and I'm going to forget the name. It's not Trembolone. It's something like Tresabolone or something, hmm. something I'm not familiar with. But it is a pro-hormone. It's a, a, a dione or an ione. Uh, supposedly, it's, a, it's similar in structure in some ways to nandrolone, you know, dec old decadurabolin mm -hmm. uh, because it's a nor 19 Although it depends on what you read, and, and, and unfortunately, it's not a pharmaceutical grade, or that's not the right way to put it, who knows what grade it, it, it is uh, made under, but... Uh, it's not even legal. I mean, I thought they were banned here It's contraband, as far yeah. as I know. I, I don't know, actually. Yeah. I shouldn't say that, but it's not on my formulary of right. drugs that are available to go at the CVS or the Rite Aid or whatever and pick That's why up. you had to research it a little bit because you were like, well... Yeah. yeah. Mint, mint uh, you know, like all pro-hormones, I mean, here's my basic stance. If you can, if you're trying to get from LA to San Francisco, why go by New York, man? If you need to get there, go straight, right? If you need something, why use a pro-hormone? I get the, the theory behind it. It just doesn't pan out in, in real life. And I know this because I've not only seen what happens in the blood, but we've used urine metabolites to analyze this stuff. Okay, okay, you give a female, for example, something as very simple as progesterone because she's got perimenopausal symptoms. And uh, let's say you want to give her a progesterone because she needs the GABA effect, you know, and I'm probably giving you more information than you want, but um, uh, you're, you're also giving her estrogen, so you got to give her the progesterone anyway, uh, but, and she's definitely short in testosterone. Uh, but she said, well, let's just give her the progesterone and estrogen. The idea being that, well, progesterone's one up from testosterone, so the body will convert. Well, first of all, if the body were doing, were doing what it was supposed to, and you could trust it, then you probably wouldn't be in this position to begin with. It's not working the way it's supposed to, so and we find it doesn't. So maybe sometimes you will see some conversion from uh, progesterone to testosterone, but oftentimes you'll see it go to another androgen, again, looking at the urine metabolites, or it'll, and it'll bypass all that and, you know, temporarily, uh, very temporarily, um, convert to an androgen, but then end up as an estrogen. you got this big bloated female who's wondering, okay, w what did you do to me? Uh, who's also, by the way, knocked out on the, you know, the GABA effect of, uh, of uh, progesterone. So um, I happen to be a big, uh, I don't want to say believer, but um, I feel that the best way to do it is if you're short in testosterone, replace testosterone. If you're short in progesterone, replace progesterone and leave it at that. We have the means by which to do so. Uh, and I think a lot of the, um, this is my opinion, I shouldn't throw in there, but I, I think a lot of the rationale behind using some of the precursors is probably the same rationale as this fella is using. Is it, okay, it's available without a doctor's prescription. That's exactly Do you remember the days when, when people would, oh, well, I can use DHEA, and you see a lot of articles about it because, and you know, who's writing the articles? The, the manufacturers of supplements? I don't know, but I think a lot of them, or, and you know, it's going to sound terrible. And I don't mean like it was a conspiracy, it's just, hey. You know, I, it's the way nature works. If you're trying to fix something and you can, it's the only way you're going to find it. And then you're going to promote that, not a way you can't necessarily fix. Okay, so a chiropractor who might not be able to prescribe a medication will say, well, I can still help you, but it's with something over the counter, DHA. I've done some research on it. And again, I'm not knocking, so please don't take it this way. I'm not knocking a chiropractor at all. I'm just talking about the natural course of things and yeah. it makes sense. But I think that chiropractors will now say, hey, that's not the best way to do that. Again, I'm just talking about how this can develop. Because DHA is even farther up than, than progesterone. Mm -hmm. It could have gone to progesterone. It could have gone to, uh, you know, to cortisol. I mean, who knows what, what the DHA could, could be converted to. And ditto for all these other pro-hormones. So in this case, what I find with people coming into my practice, for example, who say, hey, you know, I, I've been taking Osterine, uh, SARM, uh, or some of these other, you know, things which I thought were no longer, I think I thought across the board, at least in the U.S., that the precursors, uh, the pro-hormones were made illegal, right? Yeah, that's what uh, I thought. I thought that was just kind of a general thing, yeah. but I might be wrong. Uh, maybe they're, you know, they're, they're taking them off one by one and someone comes up with a new precursor. <laughs> it changed the name in the bottle. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, even but with the substance. But my point is, again, uh, I think a lot of the rationale for using them isn't a good one. Um, and I think we've talked about this before. When we talked about SARMs, the results aren't as good. Okay, you may get there to San Francisco, but you've had to go via New York, and you didn't go first class. You went Econo for sure, and I don't think you ended up in the same condition having to go through New York uh, as you would have had a straight shot, I guess is the way to finish off the analogy. I, I've seen the SARMs. They don't work as well as natural testosterone from what I've seen. And we did, you know, some extensive work, uh, Dr. Goley and I, looking into this uh, with uh, guys that were were taking um, Osterine. It was provided by a, a manufacturer, and we looked into it. The manufacturer completely subsidized all the testing um, nice. because they wanted us to give it the thumbs up, and we didn't. <laughs> you know, it, it just didn't work out the way it looked good on paper. It could have. And that's yeah. the way also yeah. people look into this stuff as they go, oh, look, and human nature being what it is, you see the arrows that go the direction you want. You go, oh, perfect, I'll take this and I'll turn to that. Yeah. And we ignore all the other arrows other equally good possibilities of where that uh, hormone is going to end up. Mm -hmm. And again, I, we've done the urine testing, and um, it, it, you'd be surprised where it ends up going. Wow. So uh, as far as answering this fellow's question about uh, which would be the best alternative, I mean, I've, I, I read that uh, this can be very, very anabolic. It might be good for you in terms of the gains you're looking for. It could also be ruinous. Again, it, it could be good for you if it ends up, in a getting right place. to this horm uh, this uh, anabolic steroid that I've never heard of, um, and then they start talking about that steroid rather than the pro hormone. Mm -hmm. are, are they getting the same results with the pro hormone? I don't know, but I would say again, very easily go to the substance you're looking for. Yeah. Uh, you know, all practical matters aside, which again I've acknowledged, I understand that's why a lot of people want to do it. Yeah. Honestly, I'm I'm um, I'm 53. Uh, you know, there's some bulls you just don't want to ride. You know, it's not worth it in hindsight. You go, you know what? I probably shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should just go and do it the right way. I think when you're young, you just don't think that way. It yeah. comes with age and uh, wisdom. Well, and I'm trying to give the best <laughs> advice. I mean, really, and that's in why this you day and age, when, when, uh, when you have so many other options available to you. I mean, it used to be maybe you had to, you know, hop a Mac flight to go to get to where you wanted to go. You had to go to New York to get to San Francisco. But now, now you don't. I mean, there, there are plenty of... Uh, Maybe not enough, but there are a lot of doctors out there that, you know, can give them some good, solid advice and do it the right way. I think it's a big fear for people to, uh, not every doctor, like Dr. Zach, you obviously, we see the comments from the show, like, oh my God, Dr. Owen is coolest, and you're just so open and explains everything so well, and don't, you don't seem to judge people, and obviously, you know, we can't see from the questions, but I think in general, people... Uh, don't want to go to their doctor to talk about that kind of stuff. It's what stops them. Another practical part of it, yeah. A lot of the judgment, a lot yeah. of the, uh, and quite frankly, and I, and I can bag on my own profession because I'm part of it, right? So I'm not being unprofessional. I'm saying, you know, our profession is lacking in certain areas, not keeping up with the population. And this is just one of them. Uh, look, you know, you can go like this all you want, but if people come in and ask you enough times, you think you go, okay, well, I better study this. I mentioned many times before, this is not taught in medical school. I mean, really, we spend 20 minutes tops on that whole section of, wow. I mean, I'd, I'd throw nutrition in there too. You know, nutrition and uh, the so-called sex hormones, so only because they include testosterone and, and, uh, and estrogen. And I have to tell you, I have uh, one of my favorite, and I got to be careful how I say this because I want it to be absolutely 100% uh, um, pro-Joseph Wonski who is a doctor I worked for in, uh, in residency, who was my favorite, by far, hands down. Big, burly Polish guy. He ran a tough ship. A lot of people did not like him because of that. It was the best, it was the best service by far of any others because you knew what you were getting into. The guy's double boarded. He was in internal medicine and endocrinology. So I'll tell you a quick story, sorry. So. There's a 73-year-old African-American male with terminal cancer. I don't remember the type of cancer. And they had him on something called Megase. Megase is an estrogen derivative that helps stimulate appetite and is supposed to put weight on you, right? And I stepped up and I said, uh, at great risk to myself, you know. <laughs> um, and I said, you know, Dr. Wonski, why don't we give this guy some testosterone? I mean, you know, it's a male hormone. It'll do the same thing. It's very anabolic. That's what we're trying to get here, some anabolic effect. And he won't feel so crappy probably, you know. I mean, uh, granted, he was miserable because he had terminal cancer. Uh, I said, but you know, this might pep him up a little bit. And man, you'd have thought 
that I kicked the dog. I mean, you know, he looked to me like I was out of my mind, down his nose, you know, and uh, I, I never brought it up on service again with anybody. And this is a guy, again, I want to state this clearly for the record. I mean, I don't, I don't thank him enough for everything he taught me, who's top of the line, you know, but he's still part of that whole profession where this is not what we're taught. And I'm not saying he's not the type that would go out and, and look into this either. It's just, what does a guy like him or me or any of these people look into when the articles aren't even out there? The studies haven't been published yet. So he was hamstring, same, same as a lot of these guys. Now, that's not the case today. And I've referred... Uh, uh, at least uh, a few patients to, to Dr. Wonski since then. And I know his attitude is a little different because he's, very, again, very progressive and probably caught up by now, but uh, because he, we have the material to do so now. And I'm not making excuses for doctors, especially today. You can go out there if you're a physician. Criminy, we get questions that are way more sophisticated and advanced than you know, most <laughs> I know doctors you have come up with, right? <laughs> well, no, no, I mean, really, there, there are sources where you can get educated these yeah. days. And there's guys who are part of mainstream medicine, like a Abraham Morgenthaler, you know, who's uh, with you know, the Harvard Medical School, who, you know, he just chaired the, um, the consensus, the international consensus, which put to rest all this blah, blah, blah about, you know, testosterone use being uh, associated with increased risk of cardiovascular events and all that, frankly, pardon me, crap. Finally, you know, and, and same thing with like levels. The only thing I had against him, and I know I'm going off on a little bit of a tangent, a lot of bit of a tangent, but he, the, the only bone I had to pick was he drew a line in the sand and said, okay, hypogonadism is officially um, uh, diagnosable when you have coarse symptoms, but a number of less than 450 nanograms per deciliter. How do you draw a line in the sand with a number like that? Okay, especially given uh, lab, laboratory error, individual differences. Mm -hmm. There might have been a really cute phlebotomist there right before you had your blood drawn and she asked you out for a date afterwards and you're going to you blow your you know, testosterone up another you know, 100, 150 points. There's so many variables in there. Finally, in this consensus, he said, you know, bag the numbers, man. Focus on the patient. Yeah, I mean, if a guy's got 1,000 nanograms per deciliter of total testosterone and free testosterone to match, well, then maybe his symptoms of, you know, low libido aren't because of, uh, you know, testosterone it might be something else. And I'm yeah. not going to the jokes we can yeah. make about that. But anyway, um, you get the, the, yeah. the point. I mean, uh, right now, there really is no excuse for doctors uh, if they choose to, to, to specialize in it. The, the biggest problem I have with doctors is to give them that, you know, look like, hey, man, what do you what do you think you're doing here? without knowing what they're talking about. Either say, hey, you know what, it's not my, my, not my bag and refer to somebody. Yeah. Uh, or say, you know what, let me get back to you on that and look it up. Yeah. Thanks, Doc.